uh, it's the everyday Australians who get screwed by our major parties. And uh, the Liberal Democrats and the Taxpayers Alliance are trying to fight against it, but it's an uphill battle. And we really need to have uh, everyday Australians realise their part in this game. Their, their skin is in the game. They've got to start supporting those who are railing against this big government agenda, because otherwise, 50 years time, we're just going to be where Schumpeter once said we're going to be. We're going to fall into a, a socialist state by accident. There's this interesting dichotomy between big government and small government, where if you go to the United States and you start talking about these things, the, the terms have immediate relevance. People understand that a smaller government is inherently good because it means you keep more of your own money and you have more freedom to move about and live your life. But I feel that, that isn't really there in Australia. I feel like mm. we don't have this cultural, you know, link between, uh, I guess, uh, you know, small government as a good thing. Why do you think that is, and do you reckon that that can be changed over time? I think it's very difficult to change over time uh, because I think the reason why Australia has a different mindset to the United States is because we are essentially uh, the creation of a military outpost. Uh, from the inception of Australia, uh, we were basically dependent on government. Uh, from the outset, if anything got done, it was because you convinced various majors and captains that the Army Corps essentially would do it. Build a road, build a hospital, build a shelter. It was essentially done by the state. So we've got a very uphill battle to make people realise that government's not always the solution. We've got more than 200 years where governments essentially run the show. Uh, we had a little period where, um, particularly under the Hawke-Keating era, where increasingly people saw that having government do everything and regulate every price wasn't getting us anywhere, and we saw uh, a brief glimmer of sunshine. But then people forget what's the reason for that glimmer of sunshine. So we've had continuous decades of growth since, but no one is really remembering that that came about because we reduced government running of airlines, we reduced government running of telecommunications industry, we reduced government running of all these areas, and that's what's let us have some growth over the past couple of decades. Uh, unfortunately, in the absence of a big recession or a crisis, it's very hard to remind people of what actually makes people wealthy and what actually means you get a wage increase. It's definitely not getting government do everything for you. Yeah, like taxing your way into prosperity is like bombing your way into peace, yeah. really. And I think history has shown that to police force. Um, there is a war that has been going on in this country for a long time, and it's called the war on drugs. And much like our war against the emu, drugs are winning. Um, so what would, I mean, I understand a lot of these are state issues, but what would the Liberal Democrats do so that we can either end this war or win it? Well, because we've been fighting against Federation for so long, the Commonwealth Government has its tentacles all over drug policy. So we need politicians at the federal level as well as at the state level to stop the war on drugs. At the federal level, there are import bans and a whole bunch of duplicate criminal offences for any sort of engagement, possession or use of drugs. So they all have to go. Then, at the state level, we need state politicians to convince each state parliament that no, uh, marijuana, for instance, doesn't need to be illegal. Uh, it's not recommended, it has its harms, but we have to compare this to what people actually do. If people smoke marijuana and it's against the law, it's the law that's wrong, not the population. Particularly when you compare it to alcohol and tobacco, which are, have their own quite severe harms as well. So we need people at the federal level to get rid of the federal overreach because they've essentially taken over large chunks of criminal law. And we need um, politicians at the state level to have the serious d decisions about how to regulate rather than just ban the use of these issues and how to deliver health services for people who are suffering addiction. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of government overreach, uh, we're now seeing the surveillance state in this country grow bigger and bigger and bigger and it seems every time there is a tragedy or a terror attack somewhere in the world, uh, that's just an excuse to grow things. And this is now a bipartisan endeavor. Both mm. sides of politics uh, you know, are shaking hands over this one issue which is taking away more of our liberties in the name of protecting us, apparently. Uh, so is the internet still a safe place? Should we be worried about this? Well, I'm no tech expert, but I take the advice of um, people who know their stuff and they say, set yourself up a VPN because uh, 
every time anything happens, the steps are towards let's restrict the internet more, let's track more of what people are doing on the internet. Uh, and unfortunately it's a result of a desire to do something. When there's some terrible tragedy that happens somewhere, if you can't do anything about the person who just um, blew themselves up in a suicide bomb or uh, there's nothing else you can further do to actually deal with the issue, then this desire to do something means, well, what about their mobile phone? Why can't we hack into their mobile phone next time around? Or what about the fact that they uh, did something on Facebook? It's a desire to do something that wouldn't actually solve the problem, wouldn't actually prevent bad things happening. It's just doing something. So uh, we'll increasingly restrict um, IT businesses that are trying to set up new apps and new ways of doing things because they're going to say, well, I can't deal with all these regulations. I'm going to be slapped uh, with terrible fines and maybe even jail simply because someone uses my app in a bad way. Uh, it's setting all the wrong incentives for how we should be trying to do innovative things and make new ways of doing business. And uh, unfortunately for the everyday person, they've got nowhere else to, to go when it comes to where they store their data because uh, eventually the government's going to come up with an excuse to say, well, we should be able to snoop wherever we want. It's pretty uh, bad police state on top of an already bad um, war on drugs situation. So uh, things are heading in a reasonably repressive situation. We need to step back and see what's going on.